Welcome, Dirty Peasants, to episode 90 of Wartwood Gazette, the Amphibia Podcast. I'm your host, Nimbaticon, and join me today, we have Impact. Hey, what's good, everybody? And Nick. Hey, how's it going? All right, thanks, guys, for coming on. Uh, so this week, we'll be discussing uh, just a general character discussion about Polly. You've heard, or... We've, if you have already listened to it, we've had the Marcy discussion, the Sasha discussion. This is just us kind of like trying to condense all of our thoughts that we've had throughout the podcast into like one, I guess, more shorter video. I know I said shorter and the Marcy and Sasha video and recordings were kind of long, but I think for, for Polly, we'll probably keep it short and sweet. Uh, no news this week. For, for the past two weeks, we've we were because we recorded. If if you're listening to the like when you're listening to this, it's gonna be probably two weeks after the Marcy recording. But we actually recorded that last night, uh, which is good. I get a good backlog. So, yeah, without any news, we can probably just go right into the topic of today. Start, we're going to cover all the planters, starting off with the youngest one. We have Polly Planter, Polly Petunia Planter. Just to give my general thoughts on Polly, I think she's a really fun character and a nice, a nice addition to the family. That, as we'll see once we talk about the other planters, like she's covering like she's the baby of the group, so she's much younger than Sprig or Anne despite them all just being all being kids so she does bring a a different experience like a different she she's not quite the same the kids don't all kind of blend together cuz you have like Anne the teenager Sprigs the kid and she's the baby so there there are like differences between them once we get to the episodes and I think she was just a nice kind of like what's nice about her character I think in season one is that when Spriggs being unhinged she can be kind of like the more sane voice of reason but of course we've seen that she can be she is just as if not even more unhinged as Sprig. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Like she's probably the most violent of the of the family, which is which is fun to watch. Uh, so I'll 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 just want to get your your you guys uh, your opinions on Polly. I guess starting with with Nick. What do you what do you think about Polly? I mean, yeah, I mean, I I love I love Polly. Like just hands, I just love Polly. Like she's always been. But yeah, she doesn't have like the biggest episodes, you know, compared to Hop Hop Sprig and Anne. But like, you know, she's always just been like a nice, fun compliment to the family, like you said. And like, also just on top of that, I feel, I feel like, yeah, one, one, like, one, you know, this is sort of like a meta thing with the show. But I think like, yeah, one of the funnest parts of just seeing her episodes and just her screen time in general is just, you know, it's just the show trying to um, sort of figure out, you know, where she fits in the family, you know, her specific dynamics of the family and just like, also, at the same time, you know, trying to make her as fun as possible. So, yeah, if you just compare, like, how she's written in those first beginning season one episodes, how she's written down the line, it's like, yeah, you know, there's a very big, you know, it's sort of the, it's sort of the same, but there's, like, these specific nuances, you know, that really create this different feel, you know? So, yeah, no, I mean, I just, I love Polly, man. I love Polly. All right. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Impact, what are your thoughts on Polly? I really like Polly. I think Polly, like has this fun balance of being, like, this chaos gremlin, but also, like, being the sane one when the situation calls for it. If, like, Hot Pop or Sprig are, like, doing some stupid crap this episode and have to learn a lesson, like, Polly's kind of always there to be, like, the voice of reason, even though she shouldn't be, because she's a baby. When all the adults are, or, like, everyone older than her is immature, Polly has a chance to really, like, shine as that voice of reason 
But Polly's really fun. I, I would say, like, she's probably the least developed out of the three planters. Um, just because we get a lot of her bigger things in season three. But for Polly as a character, I think she adds, like, this fun chaos to the family that's that's nice to have. I think without Polly, like, I think the planters would still be fun. I still think, plant, like, Sprig and, and, like, Hot Pop would still work. But with Polly, she's kind of, like, a fun, like, she adds, like, a, a fun extra factor to the family that I like. And her time with, like, and two is also really fun. All those episodes with bombing with both of them is always great. So I like Polly a lot. Thank you, Impact. Yeah, like the first season, of course, we don't really get too much of her. Like we we see in season two and three, she'll get more focus. But at least in season one, she is definitely used to kind of round off the cast by having her. We we do get a couple interactions. Like she's kind of the reason, not the reason, but usually when Sprig and Anne go on their adventures, like Polly's off or Hop Pop's off doing something with Polly. And I like the role because Sprig and Anne are definitely like more like they they consider each other more as equals while Polly is definitely seen as like the little sister for Anne. Maybe not as early as season one. That definitely happens like down the line. Like that happens over time. But she is the character that when we see how much friction that Pop Up can have with Sprig and Anne. But Polly's the yeah. character that all three of them kind of like agree to be like the more um When Polly's the one that has to be kind of like disciplined, and Sprig and Polly are all gonna end up kind of like being in agreement, and are kind of like on the same page of looking after her, which is nice. That's like their that's like their common ground. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that like, Anne and Sprig are equals because it's like. I think, like, I think there are points, like, when Sprig and Polly feel like they're equals. I think that happens more when season two comes along, uh, more than anything. But, like, in season one specifically, there definitely is, like, I think in season one, Anne and Sprig are on the same, like, like, level. But I think as the show goes along, eventually Anne grows out of Sprig's, like, position. So Sprig and Polly get chances to, like, be with each other a little more, if that makes sense. Because Anne's taking a big sister role. So it's like, or oldest sibling role. So it's, like, different than, like, what's the word? Than, like, it was in season one. So it gives, like, Polly a different dynamic with the family as a whole. So, yeah. Yeah, and, and since we didn't get too much of Polly, like her episodes like Girl Time and A Night at the A Night at the Inn, at least with Girl Time, I think which is like I think a very underappreciated episode just because of like how Preach, preach. Polly is not like Sasha or Marcy. You could make some kind of comparisons to to Polly and Sasha, which I think, eh. are, which which I think is fair. But I think the entertaining part about it is that like Polly doesn't have Polly doesn't assert the same kind of control on Anne that Sasha would. Polly is just is just chaos. <laughs> that Anne has to like that Anne has to like learn to deal with but then eventually embraces as we see in like yeah. Lost in Utopia <laughs> I don't know which is like a really yeah that is, that is a pretty sweet you know evolution of their friendship because again you know we just have a reminder of how it started off and it, Anne just clearly trying to sort of you know 
kind of kind of grass. Like, what, what's the word? You know, sort of like box her in. Yeah, box her in a certain way she likes. Then yeah. Again, you know, there's really only two Pollyann episodes. I love saying Pollyann, but there's really only two Pollyann episodes. But you know, they do tell like a nice story of Anne, you know, acting like a stereotypical teenage girl and trying to box Polly in that too. But then, you know, eventually, you know, those two are really just embracing the fun and chaos that come with each other. Like, it's nice. Like, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's nice seeing these two break away from stereotypes and just evolve into, like, you know, the best selves. You know, like, that's, like, again, you know, Polly, she, you know, she might not have, like, a ton of mind-blowing episodes um, with Anne, you know, like Hop Hop and Sprig do. But again, you know, it's just, you know, she still has her own nice, meaningful, you know, Springtown fan. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm trying to remember Polly's voice actress, uh, Amanda Layton. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Amanda. Layton. Yeah, you got it. Right. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, she... I was slipping. I can't even remember. I was. I'm slipping. Probably. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was slipping too. I was slipping too. Like, yeah, like she, she's like a fantastic, like, like the nasally little voice, like, <laughs> and I guess we didn't. I know for Sasha and Marcy, we kind of talked about the evolution of her design. I think with Polly, we'll probably talk about it like near the end. Yeah, yeah. Because right now, like, she, yeah, right. I mean, like. <laughs> She's a ball. Like she's the she's the bucket in the ball. So she's like what's fun of, funny about Polly is that like she's always like either like someone's holding her or like she's like in Anne's hair or something or like she's in a bucket. Like she's never really like walking around like the other characters do. So it, I don't know, there's a certain charm to season one, Polly, I like. Like yeah. noticing like like I think there was like one Twitter post I think that just posted all the times Anne's like holding Polly, which is just funny because it's like again she doesn't have legs so she can't like she has to like bob around or like jump around <laughs> to even get by. So like I don't know like that's I don't think we have any other characters that like move differently like like Polly throughout the show like everyone else like just kind of walks around like I guess it may be Andreas. Does that count? I don't know. Like, on, nah, he doesn't. Count. On cyborg legs, he still. <laughs> well, like, <laughs> I guess, yeah, but like, because he's like bigger, yeah, so like, yeah. he always shakes the room yeah. when he's walking around and shit. Like, yeah, like, it's. But with Polly, it's like she's always like the the, the animators gotta like think about her differently every season, <laughs> or at least in seasons like one and two and three, they had to like learn something new with her. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, like I, I like how Polly like moves differently than the other characters. Like she, she'll bounce around too. <laughs> yeah, and also like good representation of the theme of the story change. Polly is constantly yeah. changing, and like yeah. throughout the story, and like growing legs, or like she'll grow some hair or something. She's like, she's like a good like rep. Yeah, she, her changing in design literally represents the theme of the story. So it's like. She gets that like extra addition to it, so yeah, no, mostly. I mean, yeah, just honestly, I just want to say, yeah, going back to the fact that, like, you know, the characters they need to pick up Polly, you know, to get around. I, I, yeah, that always, I, I was, I always thought that was just like a nice, you know, like, yeah, one of those nice, uh, you know, details you add to a story just to really, like, I, I don't, I don't know how to work, but you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I feel like. They didn't have to do that, right? They didn't have to, like, make a whole thing where, you know, the planter family, they have to, you know, carry her around and stuff. I, I, I don't know how to word this, but... I mean, I, I, I hope what I'm saying makes sense, you know? It's, it's, it's just, like, a nice little thing they added to the show, you know? I guess, I, guess, I guess that's what I'm just trying to say about it. Yeah. Is there anything we want to add about Season 1 before we get into Season 2 stuff? Um... No, I think we can just go into season two. Okay. I think of anything, like, you know. Okay, because, like, in season two, she definitely gets a bit more focus. Like, we have Truck Stop Polly, Quarrelers Pass, uh, Night the Inn, not Night the Inn, uh, <laughs> Night Drivers, 
friend or frobo kind of just listing off stuff i think that's about it and yeah i think overall it's just nice to get be, like the the quest or the journey to utopia kind of brings out different sides of the planners like with spring it's very like once you get to utopia it's We, we do get some stuff from Sprig, but prior to that, it's more about him like embracing the adventure. Hop-Hop's kind of not looking after the farm, so he's thinking about other stuff. With Polly, it's a little bit more the insec the being more insecure about going, leaving Wartwood. Very, like, we briefly get that those kinds of feelings in Quarter's Pass. I think it was a nice, not Quarter's Pass truck stop Polly, which I think was a nice yeah episode to touch on. Like it still reminds the viewers that Polly's still like a child. Not a child, like a baby. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. I think that's something that like I think season one did too with like what was that episode? Night at the end. Yeah. Like I think that episode like in this one now in season two, like keeps the idea that Polly's still a kid. And like so it's great is that like the family is changing in season two. Like Anne has to like take care of like Bessie or whatever and drive her. Like Hop Hop's like essentially Anne's taking more responsibility in the family. So now like what's happening is that the family dynamic is changing in season two a bit more. So it's like now Polly is getting and like they're on a road trip too. So it's like Polly doesn't have like the same attention she would like back at home. So I like that, like, while Polly is like a chaos gremlin and like she's into violence and stuff, like they still keep the young side of the character like still important. Like Polly is still a baby. Like she the so still treats her that way, and that's good. So I think like Quiller's past, like the changing in family dynamic makes Quirler's past, like, function as an episode. So, like, that dynamic can, like, exist later with, like, I forget the episode. Um, what's the episode where, like, Sprig and Polly, like, are controlling the wagon? I forget. Which That's Night Drivers. Is. Night yeah. Drivers. There we go. There we go. Like, so it allows that dynamic to exist with Sprig, which, you know, isn't my favorite dynamic in the show, but, like, it do, it is created by that. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking... Yeah, it was nice to get more sibling stuff between Sprig and, and Anne. Not Anne. <laughs> Sprig and Polly. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and Night Drivers is kind of like a nice like companion piece to Corlers Pass. Yeah. I think like because Polly gets her time with Anne in Utopia too. Like like and I think that's just great because they just get to like mess around and have fun. Because then like Nick, what you said, like it evolves from like um from season one where like Anne is like trying to force Polly to, like, fit her perspective of, like, what they're supposed to do as girls. Like, which in a way, like, Anne is forcing gender norms onto Polly, so. And Anne realizes, like, she doesn't have to be chained by those later on, like, like, by the end of that episode. So now here, it's, like, they get to like, just have, like, a fun girls' night out, but it's, like, just, like, the things they like and not things that like and believe she's supposed to like or supposed to do if that makes sense even though that kind of yeah. still exists yeah. but like in the sense like well nah that's not true yeah like i i like that like difference in those two episodes and it's not like like this major like like twist but it's important because and building this relationship with it's not like some twist where like like Hot Pop stole the box or like Sasha betrays the friend group. It's not like that. Like it's a small like beat that 
that still matters because Anne's going to leave Polly at the end of the show. So all this matters. Like, all this yeah, bonding in the relationship, like, even if they didn't leave, it would still matter. But, like, it, it's important for Anne to have these moments with the planters now. So, yeah. You know, absolutely. Yeah, because it's just like, because I feel like yeah, it's one thing for Anne to realize that she's been, you know, hurting this person that she needs to back off and like, you know, stop forcing them to live in their perspective. But it's also just like, yeah, to also like show her, you know, what are like the benefits of it? You know, like what what can you really get out of a relationship where you're just both free, you know, loving each other and stuff? And like, yeah, that's a. I just blanked out. What is the episode name? What's the episode name Don't in Utopia? It's like Lost in Utopia. Lost, Lost in Utopia, yeah. Y'all, I'm, an episode two, Nick. I'm slipping. Yeah. Yeah, I'm slipping. We're slipping, but I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, really, again, just, you know, even so a bunch of crazy shit happens in that episode, there's just so many fun, silly things that Ann and Polly did, right? And and you can tell that's definitely going to be like a special thing for Polly. Like, that is, a, sorry, a special, yeah, no, yeah, I'll say I'm right, a special thing for Polly, a special thing for Ann, you know, just those two. Yeah. We don't have that experience. Like, yeah, no, it, it's it's really great. It's really touching. Yeah, and while Anne yeah. and Polly get to be like free spirits together, friend and friend or Frobo is kind of like I forgot who brought this up, but friend or Frobo is kind of like the Anne or Beast for Polly. What do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. No, sort of like her own beginning. Like, no, I yeah. think it's like, you know, you got someone that sort of crashes in, you know, her responsibility. Oh, yeah. Hey, no, that, that's, yeah, no, that's, wow. Okay, that's smart. Yeah, because again, her responsibility at the, at the um, her sense of responsibility is questioned at the start. And then you have this new thing suddenly crashing in that Polly, you know, at first she messes around with and she, okay, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, there's that sort of structure there. I, I kind of, I see it. Oh, sort of oh I get it. Because like, Sprig kind of does the same thing with Anne in like Anne or Beast. It's like when Sprig first meets Anne, it's kind of like what's the word? Like Sprig is like acting irresponsibly and like Hop Pop is telling him, hey, you gotta act responsible, yo. And then like then he actually does that with Anne and like actually like chooses to take care of her by the end. And so they're like building this bond throughout the show. I guess like here it's like Polly's doing the same thing with Robo. Where like Anne and Sprig are like, yo, you gotta like be responsible or whatever. And then <laughs> then the same thing happens with Polly and Frobo. So I guess that does work. I never even thought about it. Like like well, Sprig and point. Sprig and Anne aren't like, oh, we gotta be responsible, Polly. They're they see Frobo and they're like, We gotta kill this. <laughs> we gotta kill this. No, 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 no. Like at, at the start of the episode, because Polly's like messing around and like Oh yeah. Like Anne and like Anne and Sprig are like too. doing quote unquote like like older kids stuff like they're having to take, take more responsibility to these stuff. So it's like like Polly doesn't get that bad because she's younger. She hasn't had to do that. Like Anne has had to like help out around the farm or with the wagon and stuff. The Sprague has had to help hop hop around with things because he's a little older, right? So like Polly never really has this chance until Frobo comes along and it's like, oh like now it's kind of the cycle happening again. In a way, it's kind of like all the planters are learning ideas of responsibility. In fact, it's an argument, it's a theme of the show. So it's like along with change. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I like how Polly it's it's so funny how like Fro is just this giant killer robot, and he's the he's the baby. Like he becomes the baby of the family. <laughs> yeah, and they kill him. Like <laughs> they kill him in true colors. Like it's messed up. <laughs> I do wish we got more time with Polly bonding with Frobo. Yeah. 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 I agree with that. I think, like, hmm, this goes a little bit off of Polly, but I think it's sometimes one of those things where, like, Frobo shows up, but then we have to, like, focus on the girls and, like, Sasha and Marcy and Anne's conflict so much. Like, 
Because when does Frobo show up? He shows up, like, right, like, the episode right after First Temple, right? And then we're going, like, directly to Second Temple. Is that right? Forgetting exactly, like, I know it's that, I know it's those episodes between First and Second Temple, Frobo shows up. So it's like, we kind of have to, like, go into, like, girl stuff. We have to get, like, Anne's temple and then Sasha's temple and then Anne and Sasha's beef and then Anne, Sasha, and Marcy's beef. And, like, True Color still makes it work, thankfully. Like, Holly still gets, like, Andrea still gets that beef, which I actually really like. Like, I think Frender, not Friend of Frobo, Fixing Frobo actually handles that beat pretty well, even if we didn't have a lot of time. But, like, the show, like, almost has to, like, because Polly, uh, not Polly, because Frobo shows up kind of late, and the planter, and we have to get to the girl stuff, the girl stuff kind of overrides Polly, if that makes sense. Like, so it kind of leads to this weird thing where, like, Fixing Frobo has to use, like, flashbacks to, like, two episodes. <laughs> so, like, it's, I don't know, it's a weird thing with Frobo. I, I'm wondering if that's a problem of, like, the girls screen time or like just introducing him too late i don't know like what do you guys think without getting too much into the frobo stuff i would say that like i frobo was like teased but not his yeah. connection with polly so it's like it doesn't feel too out of place like, I still think Frobo's, like, introduction feels natural, but just, like... Yeah. I wish we got a little bit more, like... I feel like there were, there were like, times before season... Before True Colors where, like, they had, like, Polly and, and Frobo, like, chilling together, but... Yeah. It's not that yeah. much. Like... I wish we got, like, in some more background scenes, like, more scenes of them, like, interacting. Yeah, because it was really just, um, so I'm looking for it again. It really was just Friend of Robo, right? That basically gave us all the, well, 90, like, 90, 95% of the Frobo poly screen time for that season, right? Like, well, uh, it, it, yeah, because I'm looking for it, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I know we have true callers, you know, where she reacts and stuff, but, yeah, like, I, I pretty much. Yeah. Oh no, go ahead. No, 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 no. I, I, I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. 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 I was just. Yeah. It's. It's. Yeah. It's definitely one of those things in hindsight. You, I do wish there was more of a story coming out of it because I think like. Yeah. Because again, it's like. Polly. Again, it's just the fact that it's like you know. Um. You know. It, sure. You know, Anna and Polly are siblings, but it's like you know you can tell. You know. If there's any planter, Anne's really, really meant to be there for, right? It's like Sprig. Like, she was really, like, I feel like those two characters were definitely, you know, built to be complementary to each other, right? And, like, there's definitely, like, yeah, because then there, there's so many, so many still. Again, you know, it's funny because I was talking about Amphibia. It makes me want to go rewatch Amphibia. Like, I want to go rewatch those Spran episodes right now. Like, I want to go see, um, like, what was it called? Sorry, I'm getting distracted. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's just. Maybe it's a symptom of the fact that there, there just wasn't there wasn't always too much going on of Polly in each season, but yeah, I, I think I think Polly just got nice. I think I think out of any of the characters, I feel like Polly always just got some nice, you know, some nice upgrades. I just you know, it made her more likable. Made you you made her like you, you yeah, you made her more likable. You appreciated her time for also just. I also guess there was like that sense of like trying to make her keep up with the rest of the cast, you know, because I feel like the cast. The rest of the cast, they're they're getting like these big arcs or plot lines, right? And or just big episodes in general. I think like yeah, Polly again, she's a little baby. She's sort of a static character. Like well, she she wasn't built like everyone else. There's this idea that okay, yeah, you know, we we just have to we have to give her something. And I'm not trying to like you know, I'm not trying to like you know knock it down or anything. But I th I think still like everything they gave her was still really interesting and stuff. But yeah, I don't know. I think I think just probably just another example of like you know, there's not too much going on with Polly, but let's at least hand her something for the season or something. I think I think it was a little more less casual than that. I think with Frobo, they did have an idea of what they wanted to do with them and, and Polly. I think it's just like, I think it's just screen time. 
it's one of those things where like well more specifically like the screen time doesn't equal value screen time has the ability to create value so it's like i think if we had like like i don't even think you need like another episode i think you could just have like polly and like frobo like like mess around in the temples and stuff like i don't know like like Frobo's like just chilling outside the third temple, but my man's like a walking walking arsenal. Like he could have <laughs> he could have literally took out the temple like by himself. Like we didn't need Sasha. That, like, that, that is true. They're what they even said. They're like, all right, Frobo, uh, you wait outside. Like I remember. Like, like, why? Like, <laughs> with you. I was like, what? Like, he just, literally like, like destroyed like, Wartwood. Like yeah, like on his own. Like, he's gonna, low like, diff. There, like, what he, he low diffed wart with, like, he low diffed it, like, my <laughs> he low diffed it. My god, it's crazy. Yeah, I don't like, know. I feel like, I feel like Fobo, like, just doesn't like go into the temple just for the sake for Sasha to look cool because as soon as Fobo would show up, it like, as soon as Fobo have showed up, it would have been like, we didn't need Sasha, like, we could have gotten the temple, yeah, like, the gym without yeah. her, like. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was literally just to make that episode make sense. Like they're like, oh, uh, <laughs> we can't. Because again, it's just insane. Because it's just insane. Because it's like again, because when you watch it live, like, you don't even think about it. You're, you're just like, okay, for what's staying outside. Because like, you, you wouldn't. Again, he he's sort of like a late comer. Like you, you don't. He's a late comer. He's not really set up to be involved with the temples or anything going on at all, right? Like he's sort of he's just Polly's like he's Polly's little brother, essentially, right? Yeah. And like I don't know. So when you so when I saw the episode for the first time, I didn't think it. Like I was just like, okay, he's gonna stay outside. <laughs> Like I didn't, <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't realize. I didn't realize until now. Yeah, he definitely could have just like, he honestly he probably could have just kept on blasting like lasers through the walls. You, you, you know, because they had to complete yeah. the challenges for the walls to raise. He would have just been like, uh, okay, destroying walls and just blast the hole and they walk through. Like it is pretty funny. I, I do think it's funny how Nick you mentioned like they want to give Polly something, and all like all of us are so like excited and hyped. When the writers decided, hey, let's give this character legs. <laughs> and we no, all like, lost our yeah, mind. Yeah, we all lost it. Again, we I, no, but it's insane. You know, it, it can. I feel like yeah, that's just like the power. Is that, is that just the power of television? I don't know. It just gets you so. Again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Like what? What made it so exciting? Seeing her get legs, I have no clue. But it was just like the nicest thing ever. Like we were all so pumped. I don't know what it was, but we just were. I think it's I think it's the scene itself because like like Andreas like tries to kill Polly misses and like keep in mind like Andreas is getting a pretty good record of like taking not taking out people but like of like what's the word like of succeeding in his plans so far so it's like you know obviously Polly's not gonna die no duh right but like the legs are like, I don't know, the legs have been set up for most of the season. And like, I don't know. I, I, I don't have no explanation why it's cool. It's just cool. This is a good scene. That's it. Like, it comes out of like surprise, but not too much surprise where it just doesn't like, like, where it comes out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. It's, I guess, I, I guess, yeah, it's also, I guess. It's also just the like the big change of pace because she's, because she's always just either bounced around or is carried in someone's hands and I guess like you know Marcy she did foreshadow it so it's like again I, I feel like I feel like we were all interested but you know it's not, it's not like it, again it, we were yeah we knew we knew it was being foreshadowed but you know there there are like a lot of other things in season two that I feel like that we were all like very very gung ho about you know even more excited and so you know it, we always just thought okay this would be a nice thing to happen but then you know when it finally did we were, yeah I, I don't know it's just one of those things like it just again I feel like just you know again we were, we're all just investing in Polly's character right like her like we, we all just we all just like Polly I feel like we all just generally like Polly and like you know her getting such a big change right like it, it, sure she's she might just be getting legs, but it's like, no, that's going to be such a big change. That's a big change for her, her, her design. Like, I, I don't know. It felt like it, like, it felt like it, right? Like, but I guess what I'm just trying to say is it's like, we all love Polly, and just getting a change as big as that was just exciting to see. Yeah, and I think ultimately, like, even with the, the legs and, like, with Frobo's death too, it leads to some better moments for the character when we get the fixing Frobo. So like, 
I think like that moment in True Colors always like it means a lot in the moment, and then it like continues to have value to the character later. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And after what happens with Robo, like it is nice to see Polly in season three kind of have like she sets up that goal to like put Robo back together. And we do see her follow through on that with fixing Frobo. And that kind of leads to like not a personality change, but like a a change in maybe interest Careers, or like Yeah, discovery like skill. discovering like a new skill that she had. Yeah. Which is like kinda interesting because it, I never really like thought about Polly being like a fast learner. I can't think of an episode before that point where that was the case, but like it also felt right for the character. Like, 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 because throughout season three, like Polly is like, she becomes like an engineer or whatever to fix Frobo. Like, she knows like Ty like pretty fast. Like, I'm just watching like, like Mrs. Boontroy's like rom coms or whatever. Like, you know, like it's. I don't know, it's like a new addition to the character I like. I like Polly being like like Polly is the quickest to adapt to Earth, like out of all three of the planters. Like Sprig, it takes a bit of time for him to get things working, but like eventually he figures it out. Hot pop takes a long time. Like he doesn't even know like what the, the TV is. Like I think Polly in the, like I think in like Hollywood Hot Pop, like Polly mentions what a TV is, but like Hot Pop like doesn't know. He just calls it the picture box. <laughs> you know, like so like it's kind of interesting that like Polly like is more in her element on Earth than it was in like Amphibia. If that makes sense. Like oh, it's like I like that addition to the character. I think season three added more to Polly that I think we kind of needed for her as a character, you know? So yeah. Yeah, I think it makes sense for her because, like, she's like the youngest one, so she's like she gets to be like the fast. Like, kids usually pick up on stuff like pretty quickly, so it's like she's the the fast learner growing up in her yeah. environment while she's growing up. So it does give me that kind of vibe. Yeah, so I think she... like oh go ahead. I think I think with fixing Frobo too, it's like it's interesting because like like this is still on Polly, but it's like Anne Sprig and like Hot Pop don't really get like why Polly wants to like get Frobo back so bad. It's kind of interesting because like I'm not I'm not sure how well that's written in that episode because like it does kind of make like, like Anne says, like, oh, they just gotta wait till Amphibia, like, to fix Frobo. I'm like, who's gonna fix Frobo and Amphibia? Like, who the hell would know how to fix Frobo? I guess, like, you go to the factories, like, the death robot factories? How does that work? Like, like what was, like, Anne's, like, plan with, with that statement? So, I don't know, they're, they're always, like, a little dismissive of, like, Polly's, like, plight to save Frobo in that episode. I don't know if that's, like, poor writing or if that's, like, good writing because it's, like, I don't know. It always is, I think just to me, like, it always felt weird, like, how they handle, like, that conflict in that episode. Like, I, I think it's, like, it makes sense for Polly to, like, be patient, but, like, telling her to, like, just wait for someone in another, like, to wait to Amphibia just never made sense to me. I don't know. That 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 one part where I was, like, always on Polly's side there, I'm like, who the hell is going to fix it in Amphibia? Like, the only, like, place you could really do it here is, like, maybe on Earth? Or, like, maybe after the war ends? Maybe that's what Anne was talking about? She doesn't even know there's a war going on. So it's like, I guess? I don't know. That was always, like, a weird point in that episode. It is a weird kind of, like, mid like, a weird kind of like Frobo's status because he's I mean season 3 does mention like Frobo has a soul but like yeah. he's off right now 
<laughs> so maybe Anne pop up <laughs> and Sprue are thinking like, you know, you can turn them on anytime. So it's like you can just wait till we get back to Amphibia. Yeah. But I mean, I, I'm, I, 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 I'm guessing. I, I guess the idea was that like, okay, you know, he came from Amphibia. Maybe he'll just be fixed in Amphibia. You know what I mean? So it's like maybe the best solution is just going to be yeah. from where he came from or something. And, and I was, I, I guess that, that, that's what I sort of figure. And they didn't. They yeah. didn't point this out, but like Frobo's size would have been hard to write around, like him going around the house. So like they made him like a head. But then also, <laughs> also that's maybe, why they killed him. Also, keep in mind that <laughs> like Frobot, not Frobot, sorry, Cloakbot uses Frobo once he's online to track them to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does have like a consequence, which I like. I like that Polly's like, like trying to fix Sobo to play as a consequence. It's just like, how would Anne? Would does Anne like like if Anne was thinking about that? Like she mentioned it, then I'd be like, oh okay, Polly, you're going a little too far. Like you got to chill out. Like, but like it never really feels like that's on Anne's thought process of like, oh uh, the the robot could find us with Drew Probo or something. And like remember in Anne's Terminator, they don't even connect the dot. That yeah. Frobo was the reason yeah. that, like, Cloakbot found them in the first place. You know what I mean? It's not like Anne's like, dude, we gotta shut off Frobo. Like, so, that, so like, there isn't another robot that comes chase them. You know what I mean? Like, it, I don't know. I, th I think, Nick, you're right, though, that it was probably just, like, they'll fix them, like, in a robot factory after it's over kind of thing. But it's, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like Anne would, like, get Polly's plight more you know what i mean like oh yeah no one oh, of definitely i think uh I, 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 I feel like i feel like that's just the thing with you know we're reviving the 2021 <laughs> discussion but but i think yeah i think that's just the thing with 3a you know it's sort of it's, uh, you, know, you know it's it's it's, it's like I, I do wish what it is it's like i'm like i can't i can't, yeah. I can't go for the like it is what it, that's three A in general, baby. I just <laughs> wish once they got back to Amphibia that they kind of continued Polly's like new skills, like the usefulness it would have in Amphibia because they're surrounded by a bunch of like now unearthed, like unburied, remanufactured robot golden yeah. age amphibia tech like that would have been polly's element and i wish they kind of the show kind of like found a way to like add like make i don't want to say her make her more useful but like kind of like show that off in amphibia i mean i would say yeah make her more useful because like in the what's the word like oh old town road when they're trying to get the proteus and there's like the drill thing yeah yeah, yeah. Yep, like that was that was mad weird. Like I'm not like we already talked about that two years ago, but it's like that yeah, stuff like no, that. Or like, it was like like yeah, yeah. Like it was, it was just so weird that like Polly's just fucking around with like the keyboard. Like she should know how this works, right? Like maybe kind of like no, just like sort of. Like I mean, it she, just felt like odd. It's like saying like, like oh, you know how to use a like a computer but not a phone, which. Um, I, mean, uh, like... I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Like that's me being like straw manny, but like yes, like it would have been nice. We we would have appreciated if if the show kind of like did something with that. Like, yeah, I think I think them. You're right, though. Like, I mean, you're that's, not that's, wrong. That's it's me, just like that's me being like a little bit like I hate saying this devil's advocate, but I didn't I didn't mean it like that. That's. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get you. Like it's just like, like even like beyond that, like like Polly doesn't really. Well, hold on, wait a minute. No, she Polly do does try to does does fix Frobo a little bit with in, in Escape to Amphibia. Yes, and I then forgot she, about that part. And then she honestly. upgrades him even like, more when they go back to Earth. Yeah, yeah. Like fixing Frobo is still like a thing throughout the season, so. I, don't know, I, I legit almost forgot the RC car <laughs> it escaped to Amphibia because it's like it kind of just happened, <laughs> you know. Like, like it's a cool moment. I actually really like that transformation of like Frobo. It's like he's small enough to still be like the 
the the planter's like pet kind of thing. He doesn't really do much, pet. though, unfortunately. But what the fuck, like <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You call for a ball, pet? I mean, like, yeah, like, I mean, like, what else? Well, okay, hold on. I guess, I guess, Bessie is more like. Well, I don't know. Like, didn't we mention that? <laughs> was that? Like, I swear to God, though, you said that. Like, I was just going on what you said. You thought like, oh, I said that? <laughs> yeah, no, like, you, I swear to God. You said like, all right, never mind. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyways. <laughs> Point is, is that, like, I think it's a transformation that works. I just wait. Like, okay, Frobo does get a lot of cool moments in All In, though. I'll give him that. Like, Frobo gets a lot of, like, good beats in there. But, like, throughout 3B, he's kind of just vibing. Like, so. That is true. Yeah. Again, yeah, that, that, that is, again, that's a... It's just, uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, we, we, we already made it live on the season. On, on, uh, we already made it live on that one season three recap. It's like, there, there wasn't too much of a story I feel like they had to tell with, with Polly. The, no, I'm not going to say, yeah, with Polly or some characters and stuff. I think, besides, I th- honestly, yeah, it kind of does feel like, you know, Anne, it, it felt like, you know, it was mainly about Anne. Andreas, some trio cleanup, and then we're done. You know, but, sort but of Pauly, like. But Polly did get the win by rebuilding Frobo, and then him right. breaking yeah. them all out of the castle in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. At good. the time, I remember like I think... waiting for that, like that Polly W, like. Yeah, and like I mean, I I wouldn't fully agree that's like the vibe of three B. Like that, it has no stories to tell. Like, no, it definitely has stories to tell. It's just like waiting on them for no reason. <laughs> you know that, <laughs> like, yeah, that's... like that's, that's that's the yeah. problem with Dream. Like, it's just like like you have cool stuff you could do with like Marcy or Darcy. Like Darcy's like right there. You know, like there is. I don't know. Don't want to don't want to rant about Dream B, but it's like I wouldn't say it's like stories not to tell. I think it's just waiting like so long to tell them when it doesn't really need to, but and that's kind of a case with Rain is back to Polly where it's like the the cool robot like cool Frobo stuff and like the things Polly gets to learn from like throughout this season only plays like a factor to the end. So the story almost is like waiting when it doesn't really need to wait. Like like you don't need to fix Frobo like you get well, fixing Frobo and all in is fine to me, but like you can still do cool stuff with the character while waiting for the finale. You don't have to wait for everything just for the finale to work. If that makes sense. So I think Polly yeah. is one of those yeah. cases there too, where like because Dre A like doesn't wait. Dre A does a pretty good job of like giving Polly cool shit to do. You know, like but then like Dre B kind of just like vibes to the finale. When it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to do that. It doesn't have to wait to give cool stuff to the character. So, I don't know. Common yeah, no, I, B. I so. agree. I think, I think, I think, I, I think, I, I think, I definitely went. Yeah, I was definitely being crass when I said that we didn't really have any stories to topic. But I, feel, I feel like it definitely still gave. There's still definitely tons of really cool stuff all the characters got in season three. I guess it's just like you know, it's. Uh, I feel like yeah, there's just that feeling of it. There was a point, yeah, we really were just waiting to get to the finale and blah, 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 but yeah, it's definitely not as like, you know. But once we got to that finale, yeah. you know what we got? We didn't just get, like, season two finale, it gave us, like, they thought, hey, let's give Polly legs, and we all, like, freaked out about that, and they're like, oh, you like that? What if we give Polly limbs <laughs> with joints? <laughs> <laughs> and then once again, these like Nick, we we talked about this before. It's like every time people debate, not debate. People are saying like, "Oh, how are they gonna pull this off?" And then <laughs> Amphibia every season finale does it, 
And yet, yeah, that, every that season finale, really we're bad. still we're still asking these questions like, how are they gonna pull it off? And they just they just do. They just give Polly. Well, that is true. Elbows. That is true. And Again, knees. Yeah. Ooh, that is that is again that again, that was that was if we're talking fan of stuff yeah again that was like one of the funniest things about just being a, I know what one of the most torturing things and funniest things about being the fan it was just always like that it, it, again it's like, it's like the show it proves itself so many times like it's like like if you just pay attention to how this show structures itself you know what I mean how Alexa handles plots and stuff like I feel like yeah you'd at least have some faith but there was always like like seriously like people were convincing themselves this show is gonna fall off like like they're, they're ready for this this show is not gonna have like, this show is not gonna have a satisfying ending like we're like my god but no but then it did it did so many times it did like so many plot lines they're like there's no way if it was gonna address this but then it does like that happens so many times and i don't think i don't think we really learned our lesson until like this show ended like <laughs> no one learned a lesson until the show was actually over this is how you can tell Nick is like coming, like ha- is like refreshing himself by saying this as he comes back to the podcast. Yeah, it's like, you're like this him, is his, like, this is your back. this is like your warm up. <laughs> yeah, it's your coming back again. I'm, a, I'm I'm gonna say another thing. It was just again because I, mean, I even feel it with like you know post series discussion because again you know people were coping like people were coping <laughs> about the trio like falling out of their friendship. Uh, they're coping. <laughs> And it's just so funny. I'm telling you, like months later, suddenly everyone's like, "You know what? Uh, I was too mean. You know, I, it's actually pretty good." Right? <laughs> Nick, like, I, Nick, I appreciate this, but we got we got to keep it on Polly. <laughs> oh, oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, Polly. <laughs> Polly rules. She's like the greatest character of all time. Love her. But yeah, like I just I think that her design was done by someone who initially did fan art, and then Matt liked it. And I think he ended up getting credit, or sorry, they ended up getting credit in the finale for it. I forget who it was. Um, right, on, I'm I'm right like... going through Google Images, just trying to find it. It was cool that we got fandom involvement into the show because, like, they're. I don't know, I thought that was like interesting to think about because like even look for like Sasha, like you know what, let's like go on to stay on track with Polly. Like for like I've seen some people say like they don't like her like time skip design, that it looks off compared to like the other ones, but I always thought it looked pretty good. Like No, I I really I really liked it. I really liked it. So I I, I know people are like, oh, you know, why didn't she fall? You, you know, because I know like with the other frogs, they start off as bald, and they then they sort of take like a unique shape as they mature. But I feel like I, I always did like that. I don't know. I, I like that I captured like the sort of same essence of frogs. It, it definitely would have felt. I don't know. I think it would have felt weird if she just suddenly like, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about because if we compare like Sprig's like uh, tadpole design to his final design, like there's like you know it's very very different. But I feel like I, I don't know because you probably she's still like sort of ball shaped, and I, I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. If we had yeah. if we had the snout or like the, the nose, well, actually no, they they don't technically have noses, but like, you, you know what I mean, like the the face bump, like, I yeah yeah I would have the lip. It doesn't change my opinion on it, but I feel like if I if we had that design, I I would have preferred it. Kind of like Sprig or like yeah, kind of like Sprig. Like you like... guys see the design where it's like she does have it. And like, have you seen that design where it's, I think it's by Cynthia, where she no, has, no, like, I haven't. She's like the ponytail, like has the ponytail. Um, hold on, let me pull it up. I was going to mute my mic just for the, to mute the tapping, but it's fine. Yeah. I'll just post I think it like. To keep talking about it while thumb like oh there we go we got it. I do kind of like that better. <laughs> well, actually, oh, this so design like, doesn't. This design oh, doesn't have the snout. Oh wow! So hold on, let me find one that does because I know there's another. That one. gives that gives her more like ivy vibes to it. Which yeah, this I is think true. Work. Wait, no, I think it's like 
this feels like a younger version than the one we see in the at the end of the oh, show. Oh, the snout. Okay. Okay, you know the snout. Okay, the snout wouldn't look. It, yeah, you know it's it still has like that sort of same ball shape. You know what I mean? But yeah, I was, yeah, the snout. Yeah, the snout would have worked on her. Yeah, okay. I think, I think, I think like, all of them, I like all though, the designs. Yeah, I think like it all comes off pretty well. I think it gives her a more distinct silhouette than Sprig, if that makes sense. Like, like she doesn't like. I don't know, like, I, th- I think it just worked. I think it all worked out. And again, like, works with the theme of the story, the theme of change. So it's like having a character like Polly who's, like, always evolving throughout the story. Like, that's great. So we get, like, what is it, like, her ultimate form <laughs> by the end of the show. So it's like, it all works out. And I do like how she has, like, the little wrench. And... She looks like a Sonic Boom character with like all the bandages. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of does though. <laughs> I didn't even think about that, but she kind of does. <laughs> looks like a Sonic Boom character, like damn, like the, the amphibian <laughs> version of a Sonic Boom character. Like, I mean, Matt had to be thinking that. Like, oh, we should have asked him that for the for the interview. <laughs> Mm, yeah, that would have been nice. That would have been nice. Uh, but aside, like, my only final thoughts on Polly is just that, like, she was a really fun... Like, she didn't need to be... She didn't need to be a complex character for me. Like, she... Because she's a baby. Like, I'm fine with, like, what we got from her. And I think... She wouldn't have the cast wouldn't have been the same without her. And yeah, I do like how she's like the literal, like the physical example of like change for the show. Like by the time we start and finish with the show, like she is like a different, like literally looks like a different person, but still is like familiar. Yeah, but I, 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 yeah, I agree. I agree. Like, I, it's just, again, it's just one of those things, you know. It's just like what they're going for with Polly. Like, you know, that was enough for me. Like, I didn't, I didn't need her to be like a super deep, methodical character. Just like a really, again, she's she, she's literally a baby, and I don't think like, you know, coming to the show, I don't, I don't expect any. I don't again for someone like Polly, I don't expect like super compelling dark narratives for Polly Petunia Planter. Like, no, no, I know I did not. But she, yeah, she fit into the show really well. She was a good compliment to, like, the main characters. Like, a lot, like, a lot of good moments came out, came out of her, her time on the show. And so, like, I, I really, I, I really just, you know, I really don't have any, you know, complaints I I can hold on to. Like, there are things where I'm like, mm, you know, I would have liked that to be better or this. But I'm like, yeah, oh, well, Polly, yeah, I, I really... I really do like what she brought to the show. Yeah, I agree. So I think with that, we can kind of wrap up our our poly coverage. And I guess next time, I think we gotta go with Hop Up. We'll see. We'll save Sprig closer to. Sounds good. Actually. Actually, I'll let you guys decide. Do you want to do? Are we going to do Sprig next or Hop Hop next? Let's I do say Hop Hop. hop. All right, Let's do Hop Hop. We'll yeah. do Hop Hop next. And but until then, thanks for listening, and see you guys next time. Say goodbye, everyone. See you, everybody. See you.